Welcome back to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video will look at the third generation of the CYC X1 Pro and Stealth motors, which are due to be shipping out pretty soon. This is probably the most significant update to the CYC range of motors that there's been, and there are some pretty big changes in some key areas. I'm going to do uh, a quick overview of the changes and then on to the list of questions that I sent off to CYC. The first major change is the motor controller, which is going to go back to an in-house design. The second generation of the CYC motor used the ASI Back 855 and the Back 2000 controllers. This was very much like a last minute decision by CYC because there were a lot of problems with their original stock controller and they turned out not to be solvable problems. So although the ASI was used, it was never really a perfect match, but everyone did their best to make it work. Uh, this is actually, um, I'll show you here, this is a generation one stock controller. And I actually really liked it myself because it fitted in quite nicely with the design of the motor. So CYC have apparently been quietly working away for almost two years on a new controller for the motors. And this is now based on the VESC platform. There will be two controllers, although only the three kilowatt X6 will be available to start with. And I think the 12, the X12 five kilowatt version will come in one to two months later. The controllers are located in the same spot as they have been in the past inside the motor brackets. And they're gonna look much close to the original Gen 1 controller uh, in styling. Um, having an in-house VESC based ecosystem also enables there to be a new app for tuning and greater reliability, mainly because if they have control over both the software on an app and the firmware of the controller, if they run into any problems, it's going to be a lot easier for them to solve it themselves rather than going backwards and forwards with ASI and trying to resolve different problems with firmware versus software. So I think any changes would be much more rapid and much more responsive. Uh, another big change is the bottom bracket. And if you look at this exploded video that's just playing and it'll freeze on the last image, you can see that the torque center is now integrated into the free wheel rather than the bottom bracket. And this is the advantage of allowing an ISIS spline, which was much requested by many people. Potentially, I think this might allow us to have aftermarket cranks, which would be cool. The installation of this part was one of the trickier areas with the older versions, so improvements in this area are welcome. In terms of display options, there is the choice of the DS-103 and the SW-102. The SW-102 is actually the base design on which the Egg Rider V2 firmware runs. The 750C option will remain for folks wanting to run 72 volts on the X1. Uh, CYC have made what I think is a wise move to limit the third generation stealth motor to 36 to 52 volts because really this is a system aimed at people that like to ride mostly pedal assist with the odd burst on the throttle so having 72 volts is no great loss. The speed of the cranks at 72 volts doesn't really suit it particularly well for PAS so I don't really think it's a great loss. If you're wondering why they're jumping from Gen 1 stealth all the way to Gen 3, it's to avoid confusion, which I think, again, is probably wise. Some other pretty cool changes to the stealth motor will be that it's available now in 100mm and 200mm BB size. So that basically means that you can use the stealth on fat bikes. And there are also options for BB92. And if you have a press fit 30 or a PF30, then you can use adapters to make that work as well. So quite a wide range of frames this can be used upon. It's still best if there's any doubt to check with CYC or the dealer to see if the motor will fit the frame or not. And they're happy to, to help out with those sorts of questions. So I sent CYC a list of questions that I had and lots of other people on Discord sent in to try and get a bit more detail and a bit more information about the new motors. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to do a huge thank you to the channel members because your contribution is greatly appreciated and it helps cover some of the costs to keep things running here. 
And if you're interested in supporting the channel in this way, there'll be some more information in the description below. But thank you very much for the people that are doing that. It's really very much appreciated. On to the questions and answers though. So a question is the new controller is VAS based and traditionally that is, is open sourced. And there are a number of companies that have used the VESC platform and then essentially locked down their branch of development and not fed back into the project. So what I wanted to know was, would CYC be true to the open source nature of the project? And would they be sharing their development, particularly with things like the utilization of PaaS systems and display systems back into the, into the VESC architecture for other people to build on? So the answer, that I got back from that is that they are going to be checking with their engineers to see how best to do that. So it, it's not a definite yes, but um, I really hope that they do go forward with that because it's not really about competition here. It's about making VESC, you know, the best controller platform that people can use. And the more people that do contribute, the better it will get. And that's not just from CYC's point of view, right? If they take it down a closed branch, then they're potentially going to be missing out on developments that other people put into VASC and, and feedback. So it really, everyone stands to benefit if everyone works together on the platform. Um, second question, uh, the form factor of the X6 version seems to be fairly compact. So I wanted to know if the higher powered X12 version would be significantly larger and have to be mounted separately um, or whether it would still be usable within the motor brackets. And CYC confirmed that it's still mounted between the brackets, but it is gonna be slightly longer. Uh, next question um, I wanted to know was if I was to upgrade to the new controller, from uh, say a back 855, will the controller be plug and play with the existing wiring harness? And yeah, nothing has changed. Uh, it's completely plug and play. All you need to do is swap out the controller. And they're saying that there will be two levels of upgrade. And the first is just to switch out the controller and there's a new Bluetooth speed sensor that's needed to go with it. So it'd be just those two things. And then there's a more extensive upgrade that would basically switch out a whole bunch of additional parts and that would give you the new style cranks and it would also get you the new upgraded torque sensor. So next question after that is whether there will be a discount if you already have um, a system with CYC. And yes, their answer is um, that there will be a discount available upon request. So uh, make sure you, you ask for a discount if you're gonna be upgrading from your existing controller for either of these two options. Um, I wanted to know as well uh, if, because there are multiple different rotor designs out, like there's been um, maybe four, five different revisions now of subtle changes and improvements made. Um, would these subtle differences have any impact on how the VAST controller worked and you know how how it would be incorporated and they've confirmed that uh, although there are subtle differences they will not have any impact on whether you can or cannot use the new controller effectively. I was very interested to know um, with the next question if there were any plans to make the controllers available to use with other motors after you know production is up and running for CYC customers. Um, and the answer for that, I was quite pleased to see was, yes, if there's demand for it, it's, it's possible. And it's because it's based on best technologies, it shouldn't be too hard to integrate into other motors that maybe use a different torque bracket or that maybe use cadence-based PaaS systems as well. Um, so next question was, if you make them more widely available, are they considering, say, an advanced app that would let you tweak, you know, the, the more advanced parameters that you wouldn't really want a CYC customer necessarily to, to be using, um, but that you would need if you were going to get it tuned for a different motor? And um, the answer for that is apparently it's just possible to use the VESC native app directly and um, there's some things to confirm with their engineers and 
I guess that also raises a small issue with regards to safety. Like, um, can anybody with a VESC app log on to uh, a CYC VESC controller? I'm pretty sure that's the case with the VESC app for stuff like the Trump of VESC. Um, it might be possible to lock it out with, with a password, but it's definitely something to think of because, you know, I, I won't want you know, somebody screwing around with my bike using, you know, just a, an app that pretty much anyone can get can get hold of. Um, in terms of advanced options with the VASC, uh, I wanted to know if CYC was making use of any of the, the more advanced features with the VASC, such as field weakening or MTPA, which is maximum torque per amp. And they're saying that they're going to be including field weakening to start with, and they would see how... Uh, MTPA could be integrated. Um, really, this was kind of more of a question from my point of view for IPM star motors because the X1 natively hits really, really high RPMs without any of these features. So I'm not sure how much use you know CYC X1 users will get from MTPA. But uh, for other motors, um, you definitely can extract significantly more performance with that feature. Um, so another question, another possibility is to um, allow access to the VEST tool for advanced users. And again, it kind of was already covered with the earlier answer is that, um, yes, um, it's definitely a possibility uh, to use the VEST tool, but the CYC systems and customers would be the priority, um, at least to, uh, to start with. I don't think anybody who's tried to get uh, e-bike parts or you know other kind of components recently can fail to notice that it's been pretty difficult in some cases. So I wanted to know uh, with the next question um, if they have like the supply of components dialed down. You know, can they make enough of these units to to supply people reliably? And um, again, I was pleased to hear that um, they have got sufficient amounts of components they feel um, in order to ensure a uh, steady supply and that they've taken that into account during the initial design phase which is which is great um, so the x1 has come a long way since the gen 1 system and we tend to find that some of the earlier systems can be a little fragile once they got into the hands of people like Marcus um, and Niels that were hammering them really hard at their limits. So I wanted to know what kind of real world testing that the upgrades are going through. Um, do they have people throwing the bikes down mountains and performing jumps like big hill climbs over sustained time periods, that, that kind of thing. So the answer for that was that um, they have engineers that ride a lot of mountain bike and one with 20 plus years mountain bike experience that are currently stressing the motors hard every day to fine tune the settings for the Gen 3 motors. So, they're saying that they're they're very well refined. Um, they also said that the lab conditions now are very, very harsh, and they plan to make some videos showing these conditions, uh, both in a lab and doing some testing, um, hopefully out on the road and trails as well. Uh, my next question was, uh, have there been any structural changes to the motor itself to combat some of the issues that people were getting with rotors overheating and leading to demagnetization and other kinds of damage. Uh, so they have made yet more improvements to the rotor and they've also implemented um, what they're saying is proper, proper thermal protection. I thought there was thermal protection, but perhaps like having it with the vest now means that they can do uh, a better job with that. So essentially, um, the power will ramp down as it gets too hot. So hopefully that will now be so effective that people won't run into issues with, with rotors anymore. Uh, I get asked all the time still about how loud the motor is. So I had to ask the question um, whether um, it's going to be quiet at this time around. It's never been like a deal breaker for me with the noise, but it is for some people. Um, so apparently the motor is now significantly quieter and they're going to prove it um, with a video. So um, I'll be really looking forward to that one for sure. Um, I was asked, you know, when they're going to be going into full production. Um, so 
the answer to that one is it's already in full production. Uh, so the lead times that you see on the website are 100% accurate. If not, they might be available sooner than that. So I think it's a couple of weeks and they're going to be starting going out to people, which is great because we can uh, we can get some, some reviews and we can find out how people like it. Uh, questions were whether it was worth getting a Gen 2 system or if you should wait for a new Gen 3 to be available. And were there any plans to discount the older systems once Gen 3 is, is up and running? So apparently there is already a $100 discount on Gen 2 with a back 855 and you can actually get an additional $150 off the top of that with the cost of a back 2000 unit. Um, so if you're unsure, there's nothing wrong with waiting for some independent reviews and see what people are posting on the social media groups. So I had a question about um, the compatibility of parts and were the Gen 3 parts compatible with the Gen 2 parts? Um, are they going to be keeping Gen 2 parts in stock? Um, so that if something goes wrong, a person can still get hold of Gen 2 parts. Um, and the answer to that is that um, yes, they're going to keep a stock of Gen 2 parts, but the Gen 3 parts are also compatible with them as well. So, you know, if, if your torque sensor goes and it's Gen 2, you can upgrade to the Gen 3 one, although you would also then need to replace the ASI controller with the, the, the new uh, stock one. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a mixed bag. Um, but, yeah, um, no matter what, you will be able to get parts for your motor and uh, repair it if there are any issues with that. Um, I asked if there were any footage available yet, and there is some footage that is being recorded, uh, but it wasn't available to me at the time when this video was made. So hopefully we'll be able to take a look at some actual ride footage and see some videos of what the new system can do pretty soon. So that's it for questions there. Um, there was one more question on Discord and that's whether the extensions for the controller leads and such like will still be available um, so people can mount the controller elsewhere, you know, so they can still move the motor into the center of the frame because that's definitely my preferred location for it to keep it nice and protected by the frame. So hopefully that will still be a possibility. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to have that. I mean, you can always make your own extensions, but uh, lots of people like to have the plug and play option. So that's it for this video. Um, 20 minutes is actually a pretty long time for one of my videos, but there were quite a few questions. So hopefully uh, that provided a bit more information for people that are looking forward to the Gen 3 system. Uh, if I missed anything uh, or you have any more questions, uh, post them in the comments. Uh, you can also post them on Discord and we'll see if we can get you some answers and some, and some answers and some information for that as well. So thank you very much for watching the channel and I'll see you all on the next video. Cheers.